Today's topic is about college life and mainly about how are you preparing yourself post college when you graduate how does that prepare you and in doing that i'll be comparing college life in africa and college life in the us or system of education overall in africa and western and especially in the us welcome this is ernest bonifas makulilo and before we go further please subscribe if you click here on this button you'll be able to subscribe and you can be able to ring the bell and get a notification wherever I post. You get some good information, the videos which I'll be sharing to you. So we are talking about college life and the system of education. How does that system of education and the college life in general in Africa preparing you to the post-college life after graduating? How does that prepare you? if we make the reference of Western education. First and foremost, many people, when they are going to college, whether it's in Africa, whether it is in Europe, whether it is in America, first thing in their mind is about employment because we believe that is part of the being feeling secured and you are spending 18 years from kindergarten to bachelor degree, some people up to master's degree, just to get employed so forget about the salary how much you get employed uh paid for that your salary i mean for the job you are doing but overall is the mindset that is where we are going is just to spend all these years so that you can be employed so if that is the case does the university or the program you are pursuing preparing you to the job market That is a little bit challenge. In American context, if I may start with that, uh, someone at the age of 16 is allowed to start working. That means can be allowed to go to work in the restaurant as long as the parent or guardian will be able to sign the contract to help uh, because the minor cannot sign this kind of contract and cannot be paid directly. So there will be some, some situation. So the law of the country is preparing someone to start working in a professional setting at a very early age. So someone at the age of 16 or 15, some people, if they start working, even to be in the restaurant, even will be just working at the library, working in these kind of small positions, until you are going to graduate at the age of 21, at the age of 22, 23, you have more than five, six years of work experience. That doesn't work in African context. So you find out someone is going up to the age of 20, hasn't worked before. Then you go to the university. The university in African context, it's full-time education. And by full time, it's no joke. It's a real full time. Meaning, uh, you just there in the school from morning to evening sometimes. But the problem which I'm facing, or I, I see, uh, is the system which doesn't give opportunity for some people to study full time and at the same time be able to work full time. So that is the problem. And why the system doesn't allow that way, if I may compare, for instance, with American system. In the American system, for instance, you are studying political science. I'm using example political science because I studied political science. So, you are at the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, or you are in the University of uh, Abidjan, or you are in University in uh, Kaduma, or whatever country you are, you are doing that your degree. So, if you are studying maybe political science, the problem is you find maybe you are 500 students there is only one teacher teaching that class. So political science, maybe 110 or 101, you are all 500 going to the lecture room and one person is just like preaching, giving the lecture. So if you miss that class, the class is once per week and then you have seminars. So seminar, you might have a couple of seminars. You can choose which one works on your schedule. But the lecture will be maybe once or twice per week. But all people have to go to the same class at the same time. 
So for that case, if your class is maybe one is at eight, another class is 11, another class is one, you'll be around the school, nowhere to go. But in the U.S., what they do is the same political science 101. So they might have maybe four teachers. They are teaching the same subject. So one teacher maybe will teach maybe early morning class of Monday. Another one will have the same class maybe on Wednesday in the afternoon. Another one will have on Thursday in the evening. Another one will have maybe on Saturday or on Friday in the evening or in the middle of the day. So someone you will be able to choose between which kind of lecture can, I can attend. Because of my schedule, I will choose the lecture of maybe 8 in the morning. And then I will choose in the evening. I will be working from morning to afternoon. So all my classes, I can choose the classes in the evening because you have more than one option. So that's why it allows college students to be also working. Either full-time or part-time can be able to work. So that means if someone is going to finish, you take college, uh, the years, four years of college in the U.S., plus if years in high school. So someone will have at least five to six years of work experience just after graduating. But that is not the case in African context. Where you graduate high school, you graduate university, the only experience you have is a practical training or the field attachment, if you might call it that way, or a small internship. It is difficult, I understand. But if, even if it's difficult, what are you doing to bypass that system? Not because it's difficult, then you have to lay down and just, okay, this is how it is. No, you have to find different ways then. What ways can you do in order to have work experience? So that when you graduate, you can be able to show you have done one, two, three, four. There are various ways you have to do. Instead of doing just the actual, for instance, you are a teacher to go to volunteers teaching, sometimes it might be difficult. But just by being at the university student, I believe there are some of the secondary school, high school around the university. Find a way on how you can be able to volunteer, whether even if you are not a teacher. Find a way to go to talk to the primary school students. Encourage them to study. Go to the high school. Show how did you manage to pass and go to the university. Explain your degree major to the university and why you, you feel that it is a cool program for you. Or what does it take if you want to study maybe to become a journalist or to become a lawyer or to become a political scientist or to become a social worker. If that is your profession, go and share with your students. By doing that way, you are volunteering your time. You can be having something to put in your resume. But also, start doing other projects. You can start your own NGO. You can start having a small club at the university, environmental club, human rights club, doing something at the university. But also, you can be able to do something online. Have a blog, have a YouTube channel, write a book, do something. So that is something else which is a different, is vastly different. And the majority of people uh, in Africa, because of that system, because of the studies that way, and I cannot just say uh, it's a bad thing what, why people don't have opportunity to work. Uh, like it's a mistake for the, uh, for the students. Sometimes the system itself... Because some, if assume you are a college student, if we say you are going to work at the cafeteria, or you are going to work in the library, or you are going to work at the uh, the uh, any restaurant outside, how much are you going to get paid? You cannot say I'm going to clean maybe the street. They, how much are you going to they going to pay? They might pay you twenty dollar in a month. It's not worth it. So sometimes you're not, not, it is okay not to do any kind of job sometimes. But in the U.S., there is a minimum wage where someone can get at least $8 per hour, $9 per hour, $10 per hour working just in the cafeteria. So that's why you'll find out college students are working in the cafeteria. College students are working in the restaurants around the street, uh, outside of the campus. Uh, college students, they have so many things they can be able to do working at the coffee shop. Because you can get at least $10 per hour. So if you work eight hours, you get almost 80, I mean, 80, 85, 90, 100, sometimes depending on how much you get. Maybe is it $10? Is it $12? Whatever. Do you have over time? Others, it can matter a lot into when you are going to make the, uh, how much are you going to get at the end of the month? But in 
Africa if you say you are going to work at the cafeteria yeah you might end up getting maybe $20 and how many hours there is not worth it sometimes so you have to find different ways either of volunteering or different ways on how you can do certain projects online for instance on my case while I was in the second year student uh, I was at it was the time when I opened my blog so I started doing my blog talking about scholarships I was in second year but apart from that, I've been into other clubs, environmental club, human rights club, political science club. We have certain events we have been doing. So you need to be to, to do something because once you graduate, people don't care whether what excuse you have. You are going to compete with the rest of the people in your country. And if you are going to apply for scholarships or jobs international, you are competing with someone in America who has been working at the age from the age of 15. You are going to compete with someone from Nigeria. You are going to compete with, from someone with, from China. So, there is no excuse. So, you have to find a way on how you can be marketable, on how you can you be competitive. You are studying marketing. You are studying accounting. Have you ever gone to start showing simple bookkeeping to local uh, businessmen? Just give them even for free. Just show them how they can manage to create the simple bookkeeping. Or how can they do some analytics to determine the future of their inventory? How, uh, how, how the sales are doing based on the data they are having? To make it some sort of analytics, uh, some sort of tracker. So those are the things you can be able to do for free. But in the end, they will make a lot of meaning when they connect together for you to be able to compete and win. So, but another problem about the colleges in Africa, majority, I'm sure, some of the countries have started changing this one, is the issue of no second, uh, just like, uh, what I can say, the second chance. If you are studying and you maybe you fail, you are in the third year, final year, you cannot take your credits and just go to another university and continue the last semester which you didn't pass, or to continue from the same school where you failed and continue. So sometimes that is a big challenge. And sometimes it's also another challenge. You are kicked out of the school. You have to pay the loan first in order to get another loan. So student loan is a very difficult situation again. So all these are just making difficulties like you have to study hard. You don't have a time to say, let me to volunteer. I cannot have time to work because if you make one mistake, it's over sometimes. But over here, I can start in the course maybe in the middle of the semester. I don't feel okay. Let me drop. I can drop. I can come back in the next semester and start again. Which is different from my colleagues in many universities in Africa. So that is a very big challenge. So education is becoming like a big struggle. Especially at the highest level of university. You cannot drop quick and come back anytime you want. You cannot transfer credit. In many universities, they cannot transfer credit. So you, you they kick you out. You, you discontinue at the, uh, maybe let's say the final year. You have to start all over first year. But you didn't fail first year. You failed just one semester. Why can't we deal with just the semester you failed? Why are we going to erase everything? So that is some, another challenge. And another challenge again, or the difference about the college life, which makes also difficult for people after graduating, is when are you getting a transcript and your university certificate? You finish your examinations in May, but you are waiting for the celebration, the graduation ceremony in December or November. But they cannot give you transcript. You are waiting just a celebration. But the Senate for the, the committee or the Senate for the university has already approved the, the, the results. These are final results. Why can't you allow students to take the final official transcript to be able to use it? So that they can apply for jobs. So that they can apply for scholarships. You cannot apply scholarship in Europe or U.S., with a photocopy of provisional results. They need to have the actual transcript. So that is something else. So once you finish, the, you graduate in May, the results are approved, just give people transcript. That's what they do here. 
Don't need to wait for six months later for the ceremony. That doesn't need, has nothing to do with approval of the results by the Senate. University Senate or anybody which is supposed to approve those results. Again, many universities in Africa don't have a program of offering more transcript if you want them. I know few universities they have. In Tanzania, for instance, I think it's the only university of Dar es Salaam where you can take as many transcripts as you can as long as you pay. So, for instance, if you want, usually when you graduate, you get three transcripts. But if you want more, each transcript, I don't know, is $5 or is it $3. I don't remember now. It used to be 5000 Tanzanian shing, which is just like $2 and a half. But later, I think it is increased to $5. So, if you want many, you have to do. There is no problem. The same way here. If I want even 100 transcripts, I just pay. But many universities, they don't offer. They give you just three, and then they offer just photocopies. You, you have to take a photocopy. But that you are restricting people to success. What does that cost you? It's just a piece of paper like this one. You just print from the from the printer. And someone can sign on behalf of the uh, deputy vice chancellor, academic. So those are the things people have to do. We have to create an environment where the students can succeed. Where the students, when they finish, they don't need it. Because while someone in China is graduating in May, is getting transcript in May, can apply right away. But someone in Kenya, someone in Tanzania, someone in Ghana, someone in Sierra Leone has to wait to get the transcript in December where the deadline for applications for scholarships have already passed. And then to apply for the other year. So we are wasting and making people not to succeed while we are producing people to be the best in over there but we are holding them back by not giving them the certificate right away by not creating an environment where these people can be studying at the same time volunteering or working for money get work experience we are not giving the option if something happened maybe someone in your family passed away you can just, oh, sometimes you like, you said maybe two years you feel this cause is not good for me. I can drop and change major. We need to have all this flexibility. But I know it is very tough to figuring out because enrollment is high. We have fewer number of professors. So, but down the road, those are the things we have to consider or to compare when you talk about our uh, education system in Africa or college life over there in Africa versus in the U.S. But all those kind will determine what are you going to do after that. Like, what can you, are you going to succeed because you you have never worked before and you are coming to start working at the age of 24, 25, the first job. How are you going to act professional compared to the person who has been working at the age of 15, knows like supervision, what is expected, how to act appropriately, how to act as a professional. All those things uh, can be able to be explained uh, if you have work experience. So I encourage students from Africa to find different ways. No matter how many challenges you are facing, you need to create your own ways on how you can be able to succeed more and more. So that is what I wanted to share more about uh, college in Africa and colleges in US, how the system is set up. Otherwise, I'll advise you and I will ask you, I'll ask you to subscribe to my channel. You can click here and subscribe. But also you can share this video to some of your friends. So thank you so much and all the best. Bye-bye.